Thank you very much, uh, Gordon. Uh, thank you also for uh, uh, reminding me on uh, uh, the last phrase of my short intervention uh, last year, because actually I lost my speaking notes, so uh, <laughs> you refreshed my memory. Uh, thank you also for inviting me, and I uh, try to, in exchange for invitation, uh, respect uh, the time limit, which means that uh, I have to be a little bit more general uh, than usually, um, making perhaps one or two general comments uh, about enlargement. Now, if we look back, uh, it's quite clear that uh, uh, enlargement uh, uh, has been an integral part of uh, European integration uh, process right uh, from the beginning. It never really happened uh, that a candidate uh, would have been uh, declined or rejected. Uh, it happened that uh, candidates were delayed, especially uh, with respect to the first enlargement. But uh, <clears throat> when candidates persevered and were adamant and tenuous uh, enough, uh, at the end of the day, they always managed to get in. Now, why? Uh, was that. Uh, the, the reason is very simple. I mean, European integration process is an inclusive process. It's inclusive uh, by nature. It's inclusive by law. Just read the treaty. And it's inclusive by interest. So, uh, uh, and that is uh, number one conclusion uh, in which we believe that each and every enlargement uh, up till now has made the European Union stronger. Stronger economically, politically, mentally even, I would say, the inclusivity makes you stronger. It gives you energy, not only those who you include by that. So um, I recall when we were candidate, and of course we also tried to uh, uh, make arguments uh, why uh, we uh, should be uh, accepted. And at that time, there was an ongoing debate, um, which was a forced debate to my mind, but uh, the subject of this debate was uh, whether a uh, European uh, community or union uh, should uh, prefer deepening or indeed widening. And at that time, we used the argument, I remember very well, uh, our discussions with uh, Günther Verheugen, my good friend and colleague who is just sitting uh, in front of me now, uh, we tried to underline that, look, each case when European Union uh, was widened, it resulted in a deepening. So in fact, each and every enlargement round triggered a kind of qualitative development. New policies uh, were uh, developed uh, in response, in many cases, in response uh, to the uh, enlargement. So it was in fact a catalyst also with respect uh, to the development of, uh, of uh, new uh, uh, policies. Of course, I have no time to go back to the Iberian uh, enlargement, the EFTA enlargement, also our enlargement. Uh, so uh, there is strong reason to believe that this will go up. Now the question is, of course, uh, uh, what will be the situation after after Croatia uh, becomes a member, and also uh, subsequently other countries uh, of this uh, region uh, start negotiating and uh, uh, conclude negotiations and uh, become members uh, uh, as uh, well. But I don't want to speak uh, this time too much about uh, the uh, Croatian uh, accession process. Just one remark, perhaps, uh, because that's important also for the future and also uh, important for other policies. I think one of the major factors uh, for the successful conclusion of the negotiations uh, was uh, the good cooperation uh, between uh, European institutions. Uh, European Commission, of course, European Parliament, always supportive, and the Council that is uh, the member states. Uh, I just would like to note that if the cooperation among the institution would be at the same level in all other issues, then of course the whole process would be more successful. But uh, let's now have a look at uh, the future very briefly, because we have to imagine a situation when Croatia is already a member, 1st of July 2013, and then we'll have subsequent year, which is 2014. Now, 2014 will be an extremely important year 
uh, just to list one or two elements. There'll be a new uh, multi-annual financial framework starting. Uh, there'll be a, a European stability mechanism put on in place. Uh, half jokingly, I would even say that perhaps even the six pack uh, will <laughs> have been adopted uh, by then. I hope, by the way, that it will be adopted very soon. A European semester uh, will be over the so-called running in period. As far as the energy policy is concerned, uh, if we read the Council conclusions uh, from February uh, by the year 2014, we'll have an integrated uh, internal energy market. Uh, we'll have a new single market act uh, in the year 2012. So uh, hopefully uh, even the crisis uh, will be over. Enlargement process will go on. Uh, of course, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to say now uh, which countries at which phase, but no doubt this process uh, will be go on. Uh, will go on, and now the question, of course, comes, what will be the reaction to this situation? What will be the new policy which we uh, try to develop in response, in reaction uh, to the ongoing uh, uh, enlargement process? And uh, in this situation, uh, my guess is that uh, the policy which we'll have to develop uh, uh, where we should make a, a, a so qualitative, a qualitative jump uh, uh, is um, the common foreign and security policy. So it is indeed a must. Uh, if the crisis is over, and if uh, so-called economic governance uh, will be put in place, and if the uh, European Union really wants to uh, match uh, its political weight and role and influence on the global scene uh, to its uh, economic uh, role, uh, clearly, uh, that is the area uh, where we have to uh, make substantial uh, uh, progress. So this is basically CFSP and uh, CSDP. Also, uh, in the light of uh, the uh, events uh, which will take place in the meantime uh, in the world. We cannot forecast them, of course. Uh, uh, future telling is a very difficult uh, job, especially for politicians. but. Uh, after all, there'll be a new situation in North Africa and overall in the Arab world, we know it. And uh, of course, there'll be very important developments uh, also on the, on the global scene. And if we want to avoid decline of Europe, this kind of Untergang des Abendlandes, which is so frequently referred to now, uh, the only way is uh, to, um, to, to, to make an ever closer union. And the ever closer union in this particular uh, situation uh, means uh, the development of the common uh, uh, foreign and uh, security uh, policy. So this is perhaps the line which we'll have to follow by the year uh, 2013 and also 14. And this presupposes uh, completing the enlargement process. As it was said also yesterday, uh, without uh, the further enlargement, uh, there cannot be a Europe whole and free. It's still unfinished business. We have to go on. Uh, despite all the reservations, all the uh, challenges we all know about, I think we have to go on. Of course, we need the cooperation of those countries uh, who are aspiring for membership. And what I can uh, say, and thereby I would conclude, that as far as uh, my country is concerned, we will always support this process. Uh, it's a national interest. It's a regional interest. It is a European interest, and it's also, I believe, a global interest. Thank you very much.